trillion dollar federal deficit. Cheney assassinating people. Big surprise. But first, a stew update. Stu has the collar of shame. Look at him. Big boy. Stu could not behave. And he chewed out all of the staples in his leg that we fixed. Poor guy. So Stu gets to wear this for several days. And he really doesn't like it. He's bumping into things. He's clumsy. Now the news, or bus style. One, zero, 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 zero. That's right, a trillion dollars. A dubious record was set this week when America's federal deficit reached one trillion dollars for the first time. It's a lot of zeros. We're busted, folks. Talk of another stimulus package may be silenced as we await the invention of a bigger abacus or more sucker lenders. The good news, Obama budgeters predict a $1.84 trillion deficit by the end of September, but that it will only be $1.24 trillion by 2010. Whew! I was getting nervous there for a bit. One last feel-good note, our total debt is $11.5 trillion. That's over $38,000 per American. Go buy a nice car, nice trip, several nice trips, maybe a small deposit on college. Let's keep racking up debt, folks. Tears for 2,000 Taliban? Say you're really, really religious and your country is being invaded. You get caught and a warlord siding with the invaders stuffs you and 2,000 fellow faithful into shipping containers without food or a weapon, water, nothing, then randomly shoots into the containers, killing several of you. After a few days roasting, you're all dead. Quote, this incident has not been fully investigated, end quote, explained President Obama. Are you thankful for the somewhat apology yet? How about this? Obama isn't done yet. Quote, and if it appears that our conduct in some way supported violations of laws of war, then I think that, you know, we have to know about that. You heard the man right, however ambiguous that was. To repeat, quote, conduct in some way supported violations of the laws of war, end quote. We all knew invading Iraq stunk worse than last month's unemployment numbers, but Afghanistan post 9-11 simply reeks. Pat Tillman's heroism, aka fratricide, Karzai's immediate appointment, those brothers a known opium kingpin, and now news that the Bush admin, surprise surprise, covered up this killing. P.S. What else don't we know? P.P.S. Two more soldiers were killed in Afghanistan, and another two the day earlier. By the time you read this, or see it, several more of our soldiers will also die. PPS. Four churches were bombed in the new Iraq on Sunday. All the bombs were set to detonate within an hour of one another. Interesting. Spreading freedom everywhere. Sotomayor versus Southern Senators. If I said anything remotely like that, my career would be over, said South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham while addressing Supreme Court nominee Sonia Sotomayor's aged yet recycled remarks about how a Latino woman might make better decisions than a white guy. Ignoring his own support for invading Iraq and keeping Gitmo open, Graham instead focused on Sotomayor's supposed racism. She is of Puerto Rican descent, after all, far more dangerous than 10 Mexicans on siesta, and questioning her impartiality, as gracefully echoed by compassionate Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions. Quote, call it empathy, call it prejudice, call it sympathy, whatever it is, it is not law, end quote. In her own defense, Sotomayor offered, quote, throughout my 17 years on the bench, I've witnessed the human consequences of my decisions. 
Those decisions have always been made to serve the larger interest of judicial impartiality. End quote. Sotomayor then dropped to her knees, broken ankle and all, to shine the many white Southern senators' shoes, much to their delight. Things that make you go, hmm. Logan Campbell, Olympic Taekwondo hopeful from New Zealand, who placed in the top 12 in the Beijing Olympics, says the brothel he opened was forced upon him because a $190,000 cash injection is needed to continue his intensive training to make the 2012 Olympics. Good stuff. The Washington Post admitted to selling access to its journalists, to lobbyists and other powerful people. All the president's men meets all our writers need BMWs. Speaking of cars, GM emerged from bankruptcy this week, feeling much better and grateful friends intervened to cut off popping all the Saturns and getting all those Hummers. Bernie Madoff arrived at a prison in Butler, North Carolina, eager to serve his time and be released on November 14th, 2139. And finally, this week's shocking news to end all news. Former VP Dick the Darth Cheney launched a CIA operation, top secret. It was supposedly what we've heard so far is to assassinate top Al-Qaeda leadership. This, this occurred over eight years and Cheney directed all operatives with the CIA not to inform Congress. We really don't know what this operation entailed. It was eight years long, assassinations, standard Cheney shit, but it was surely inexpensive for taxpayers, totally impartial, and highly effective, much like Cheney's other classified operations over his esteemed career. Indict this guy. Please indict him. There's no excuse. He's using our money, our good name, indict the man. And after all of this bad news, a poem to make you feel better. Poverty with a view, ain't nothing new. Summertime in bend, a broken heart on the mend. Can't outdo the river, bikini tube skin giver. Without we'd be a mess, can't survive on much less. Jobs will gladly take, beer money we must make. Empty mansions on the cheap, awaiting winter's white, deep. That's the news, folks. We'll see you next week. Next up on News or Bust, beautiful sky or a celebration for the hanging of Kermit.